Welcome back to Technology and Programming and Mathematics. In our previous video, we had discussed the idea of a tangent line approximation for a function. Now, of course, a tangent line is a linear function. It's a line. But a line is a degree one polynomial. And in that video, we even discussed how to refine the tangent line approximation so that the new approximation would have a bend in it that matched the bend in the graph of our function. And we did that by incorporating a second degree term. So just to kind of summarize what we did there, our tangent line approximation for f of x at x equals c, you can build it by evaluating the function at x equals c. And then to get the slope of your tangent line, you differentiate and evaluate that. So you do f prime of c. And you need to multiply by x minus c. To get the bend in your approximation to match the bend in the function, you've got to incorporate the second derivative, which measures the concavity. So evaluate the function, evaluate the derivative, evaluate the second derivative. You need to divide that one by 2. Okay, and notice this does not have any x minus c. This has x minus c to the first. This has x minus c to the second. All right, so hopefully the pattern here, or at least part of it, is, is becoming clear. Let me scoot myself out of the way. So if we were to do a third degree approximation, we would evaluate the function, evaluate the derivative, times x minus c, second derivative over 2, x minus c squared, okay, third derivative times x minus c cubed, okay, that pattern's pretty easy to see, I hope. We don't have any x minus c here. We have x minus c to the first, x minus c to the second. It makes sense that we would have x minus c to the third. Okay, now the only thing that might not be obvious is that here we would need actually not a 3, but a 3 factorial. And the reason is, if we differentiate once, 3 will come down, cancel the 3. If we differentiate again, we want, we're going to have a 2 come down. We need a 2 here to cancel out the 2 that we're going to get from differentiating. Okay, so this is perhaps better understood as maybe a 2 factorial. Okay, it's a little tricky because 2 factorial happens to be 2. So this is our third degree approximation to a function. And you can extend that to as high a degree as you would like. Okay, so I want to switch over here and look at GeoGebra. It has a, a, a unique little feature that can help us with uh, these, these approximations here. So tell you what, let me put a slider in here. Nope, I got to go to the Tools menu. Select Slider. And I want this to be an integer. And uh, how about we go to 12? That should be sufficient. Okay. So let me go back here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type this in. Notice how GeoGebra is giving me this kind of reminder. Okay. Taylor polynomial. Okay. So I've got my function here. My function is sine x. You can see that oscillating curve right there. So I want the Taylor polynomial to the function f. Uh, let's make it at x equals 0, and the order will be order n. Okay, so the program is claiming that the Taylor polynomial of degree 1 for f of x equals sine x would be just x. Okay, let's, let's do some computations here by hand and confirm that. 
Okay. So for an example here, f of x equals sine x at x equals 0. Okay, now notice these all involve x minus c, but we were talking about an approximation at x equals c. So you have to have an x value where you're going to evaluate the derivatives, and that's also the value you'll need over here. So this will be the value that we take right here, x equals 0. Okay, so f of 0, let's figure out what that is. Okay, well, sine of 0, that's easy. Sine of 0 is 0. f prime. Okay, now, i got to figure out this first. f prime of x is cosine x. Okay, if my function is sine, if I differentiate sine, I get cosine. And now that I know that, f prime of 0 would be cosine 0, so that's a 1. All right, so if we go and look at our tangent line approximation rule, f of 0 is 0, that's a 1, and x minus 0. So I'd have 0 plus 1 times x minus 0, which would simplify to x. Okay, so that's easy. Great. Uh, how about f double prime? Let's see if I... If I try to get a quadratic approximation of this, let's see what happens. Okay, well, differentiate cosine, you get negative sine. And if I do f double prime of 0, that would be sine 0, so I get 0 again. Okay, so the coefficient of the quadratic part would be 0. It would go away. Uh, down here, let's look at our third derivative. So my third derivative would be, well, you differentiate sine, you get cosine. So you differentiate negative sine, you get negative cosine. So if I evaluate my third derivative, I would get negative cosine 0, which is negative 1. So let me think about how this would play out. Okay, this is 0 plus 1x plus 0 minus 1x cubed. Okay, let's check on GeoGebra and see what we're getting there. So I'm going to manipulate my slider here. Second degree doesn't do anything because we saw that the coefficient of the second degree term was 0. Let's go to the third degree. Now it should be, okay, 1 times the first degree term, minus 1, and of course that's coming from this right here, okay? The, co the, the coefficient of that term involves the third derivative. So let's switch back, so there's our minus 1, x cubed over 3 factorial, okay? And notice what's happening here, right? That, that's our original function. Notice that it starts to separate from the graph quite substantially before x equals 1. Oh, since I'm dealing with co uh, a trig function, since I'm dealing with sine, let me, let me change this here. Uh, my x-axis, I want tick marks every pi over 2 units. That's a neat feature of GeoGebra. Okay, so notice it starts to deviate pretty substantially even right here. But if I go to my third degree approximation, notice it's, it's better. Okay, it's matching the graph of the function for even longer. Okay, and of course, you know, with GeoGebra, we could do this for as high a degree as we wanted. Okay, fifth degree, it's even better. Seventh degree. Ninth. Okay, notice how far out it's matching. Okay, so the basic principle... for these polynomial approximations is we evaluate the function, we evaluate the derivative, the second derivative, the third derivative. So if you wanted a fifth degree polynomial, you would need to evaluate five derivatives. Now don't forget you need these factorial coefficients right here. So let me, let me say something 
about that. So the general pattern would be that f of x, and this is at x equals c, it can be done at any, any input value, f of x is approximately equal to f of c plus f prime of c times x minus c. And then we keep on going in that fashion, and the general term looks like this. We take the nth derivative, and we evaluate that at x equals c. Now, you've got to have an n factorial down here, and then it'd be x minus c power n. So you can follow that pattern up as high as you like. And this is called the Taylor polynomial for f of x at x equals c. Now, it's usually simplest to do this when c is 0. When c equals 0, we get that this f of x is approximately equal to f of 0 plus f prime of 0 times x plus, and then we would keep on going, plus f nth derivative evaluated at 0, n factorial x to the n. Okay, all I did was just replace the c's with zeros. And this is called the, now let me, let me I gotta check the spelling, I never get the spelling right. Okay, so this is called the Maclaurin polynomial. So that's the Maclaurin polynomial for f of x. All right, now, as mentioned in our previous video, one of the important uses of these polynomial approximations is to approximate the value of our function for various input values. Okay, so... If I'm looking at this here, okay, I know the value of sine for some special angles like uh, 30, 60, 90, or 45, uh, or if I'm, if I'm actually being a, a grown-up, um, pi over 4, pi over 3, pi over 6, pi over 2, okay, I know the sine value at those angles. But what's the sine of 1 radian? Well... I don't know the answer to that, because that's not one of my special angles. Pi over 3 is a special angle. Well, if I wanted to find the sine of 1 radian, I would plug x equals 1 into this Taylor polynomial. And the result would be a pretty good approximation of what the value of the sine function would be when x equals 1. And x equals 1 is, is a, I don't know, somewhere in here, right? It's... And we can see this is actually a pretty good approximation because we're having the function match the graph, not only by incorporating the y value and the derivative, but incorporating various bends by getting these higher degree polynomials. Okay.